I was lucky enough to get myself two tickets to um, Dylan White versus, or should I say Tyson Fury versus Dylan White at Wembley, man. Listen, let me tell you about the atmosphere. The atmosphere was was electric. And that Fury um, entrance with the whole Biggie Smalls at the beginning, listen, man, I give him props for that. Obviously, it was St. George's Day, so... He had the England flags. <laughs> he had the England fans on the gloves, and then I think his team, his team all had, um, you know, England attire. I should say so. It had the red, of course, the red, um, red and white cross, and then Dylan White also had a good, good entrance. His uh, usual entrance theme. I've, 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 I don't, I've even forgotten the song, the name of the song of his entrance theme. But you'd have to. I'd, when I went to um, Dylan White Rivers, I did get a nice video, so check that out on my page. But let's get to the fight, man. Um, listen, Dylan White starting the fight as um, with a southpaw stance. That that threw me off, especially when I was there as well. And the weird thing is, when you're watching the boxing in the stadium, you're more so watching it on the screen. You're not watching the ring because I was quite far. I was quite far out. I think I was like maybe level four. And like it's, I was looking at the screen. No, I didn't know. Initially, I was looking at the ring. And I thought this guy had a southpaw stance. And then I looked at the screen to confirm. And I was like, well, what is this guy doing? I think he obviously just done that to throw to throw um Fury off there. But listen, Fury was 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 excellent, man. He 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 boxed he boxed very, very well. Um kept his range, jabbed his jabbed through, uh White's head off. And you could see obviously White was um getting to the point where he was using dirty tactics. Um, holding him for long, a punch in the back of the head. I, I di- at one point, I did think that the referee was going to give them um, both a point off because the ref did stop the fight at one point to warn them both. I think from obviously there wasn't um, they didn't have the best of behaviors, but um, yeah, Dylan White started very very slow, man, very very slow. It, I was I'm not gonna lie, the, the fight was it wasn't a great fight. It wasn't a great fight. And I was quite disappointed with. With Dylan White's approach, considering how long he had been, and obviously there's talk about whether um, Mark Tibbs should Dylan White have left Mark Tibbs. There's actually an interesting video of how um, I think Mark Tibbs actually said before the fight where Dylan's weaknesses is, and it's where he gets caught with the uppercut. Obviously, he's been caught with the uppercut against AJ um, in their first professional fight, then got caught with Povetkin as well. I spoke about that in my Povetkin video as well. If you if you check it out, he gets. He gets caught easily, um, Dylan White. I think, look, Dylan White. He's a great box. He's a, he's a good he's a good fighter. But is he a great boxer? No, because you can see it in his footwork as well. His footwork isn't great. He's quite all over the place. He's been quite lucky. Oscar Rivers, I think I remember from that he showed very very poor um, footwork. And like I said before, with Povetkin, that was beautifully timed. That that knockout he got. That was that was more of so left a left a left hook like a left uppercut, from what I remember. I'd have to look at the video again, but um, from a psychological point as well, obviously with Fury of that entrance, man, I'm just thinking. Listen, you've got ninety four. Listen, the majority of the stadium was 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 back in Fury, straight up. The majority, of the, I heard a lot of booze for for Dylan White it, when he came out. It wasn't. He wasn't. It, it, it wasn't the atmosphere that Dylan White might be used to. You've got to remember, Dylan White is is um. He's uh not is is not hosted the O two. He's been on the top bill. He's been on the the major um main event. He's been the main event um for for some fights. Uh, obviously Chizora two is the main event. So fans, a lot of fans, um, majority of fans do back down right. But this in this stadium, listen, I'm telling you, then uh, Tyson Fury had the majority of the crowd, man. And then at that point, when when Fury started running towards the ring. <laughs> when he started running towards the ring, man, I asked when I was like, okay, this guy, like that from a psychological point, that's like in football where they say you've got the twelfth man. It was like that. He, he had the twelfth man. He had the fans behind him, man. And I thought, oh man, this guy, especially someone like Fury, he 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 loves it. He he absolutely loves it. But that guy, at that that fight, that made me know, okay, Fury is this guy is just gifted. Like he just sees things coming. Before it actually happens, like he, the timing was beautiful in that. In in there's one point where he he caught. I remember what I'm saying. I'm just remember from what I see in the stadium. I haven't even watched the fight back. But there was one point where he were he 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 almost fainted and then hit him, hit him with a uh, 
with a with a nice uppercut. Um, it was not a, right, a nice hook, sorry, a nice right hook to the to the body on on Dylan White, and Dylan White was getting frustrated, man. I have heard some uh, some interview from Dylan White where Dylan White did say it was a close fight. I asked, listen, I don't know whether his team has told him to say that or not, but listen, it wasn't a close fight. And he also said that after Bevetkin, after Bevetkin lost, he said that he tried to get up at eight and then the referee waves it off when, but if you look back at the tape, at eight, he was still on the ground. So I don't know, man, maybe he's, he's, I don't know if he's being genuine with what he's saying, but. Boy, and, it's, and I don't know if, if if there may be some underlying health concerns. Remember, we did see Dylan White calling uh, John Fury uh, Bunce. He called him Bunce. What's his, what's the Bunce's first name? I don't know, actually, is it Francis? No, but, oh, what's, Bunce, what's Bunce's first name? Steve Bunce, I think it is. Oh, I, should, I should know that. But yeah, calling Bunce uh, John Fury. And I was thinking, I don't know if that was banter or not. I don't know if he was being genuinely serious, but... Yeah, man. Um, and Fury, see, um, not Fury. White seemed a little bit unsure about himself be- as well before the fight. Kind of like he felt a little. He seemed a little bit unsure of himself. He was like, he almost had an attitude. Was like, let me, let's go in there, and let's see what happens. It, it wasn't the the uh, the Dylan White we've usually seen. So I don't, I don't know if he had doubts before going in. Um, remember, we didn't really see or hear much of him throughout this whole entire um, match build up. You know, I'm saying we didn't hear much from him, man. But listen, it was a good fight. I'm interested to see whether Fury does actually retire. I don't think he will. He, listen, it's all about legacy with this guy. They are boxing people. They know about legacy. He knows that if he goes out now, he he can't call himself a legend. He'll just be known as a one of the best in this era. But if you want to put yourself with the Tysons and uh, the Muhammad Ali's, the Joe Frazers, uh, Van der Holyfields, etc., etc., listen, he has to take. He has to fight AJ and he has to fight Usyk. If he beats those two, then cool. Fair enough. And especially if he stays unbeaten as well. So a couple, even um, I was listening to a Frank Warren interview earlier. He, I think he, he said that he thinks that Tyson Fury is at his peak now. He thinks he's at his peak now. But listen, I enjoyed the event. I did, Listen, I got, I got to the event, I think maybe 10 minutes before... Um, the entrance is because the undercard was there wasn't any it was quite disappointing that it, you, this could have been an excellent card you could have had Anthony Yard you could have Daniel Dubois you could have Joe Joyce you could have had an excellent card but I don't know what happened I haven't, I haven't I'm sure there were some political reasons why and that the majority of the money is going to go to Tyson Fury and then like anyway because obviously if you've got fighters with, with, with names they're going to want more, more money being on that card but I guess that's why you signed to Frank Warren right to, to have the opportunity to fight at Wembley and then this one big event he's he's sort of just gone his own way but man looking forward to the next boxing event whether I'll go to the boxing event and get row four or get level four or not I don't know man I, it's at the, if it's at the O2 whenever I next go to a boxing match you've got to get near the ring man because otherwise it's difficult to see. Is there, is there any point there and watching it on a screen? You might as well watch it at TV and you get a little bit of commentary as well. Because, um, yeah, when you, when when uh, Tyson Fury hit him um, with that uppercut, he, he then pushed him. And I was thinking, I didn't actually see the uppercut. I just saw the push. I didn't see the uppercut. Um, it's not until I saw the replay and I was like, oh, man, it looked like his tooth had even come out. It's like flipping heck. But man, excellent boxing. I'm definitely doing more videos. I don't know why I'm listen. Actually, I do know why I've been doing. I haven't done more videos. But listen, we're not going to go into that now. We're here. CBC. I'm out.